and one of the criteria to see God is purity, righteousness, and holy living. The Bible told us in the book of Genesis chapter number 6 and that God came to Noah because Noah was a righteous man. Noah was living in the midst of the people that were living in an unholy life. A life that is godless. A life that is bankrupt of God. And God was getting ready to judge the entire world. But the Bible said Noah found grace in the sight of the Lord. But before God would come to Noah, the Bible told us what Noah did. Noah was an upright man. Genesis chapter number 6 and verse 9. He said, these are the generation of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generation and Noah walked with God. So Noah was living a, a life that is quite different from the other. A life that is conscious of righteousness, holiness, purity. This kind of life is what attracted God to the life of Noah. And me ask your neighbor, what kind of life do you live? There are a lot of us that threw away righteousness and then we cleave to prayer. We think that it required just prayer for God to encounter us or for us to encounter God. We don't walk in the fear of God. We live in immorality. Many live in immorality in the life that is unpleasant to God and so we are full of prayer and you think that you can see God only by prayer. No! You must be righteous. You must run away from sin. I know that you may not be able to get to the standard of Christ's righteousness. You have to inherit that in the name of Christ. But however, one must do his or best to stay away from the things that defile and desecrate, such as lie, anger, fornication, hatred. There are pastors that are still living in sin. There are pastors on the pulpit. They can prophesy, but they commit fornication. They commit adultery. There are members that are living in sin. They can do every kind of thing, but purity is not there. The Bible told us in the book of Psalm chapter 24 verse 3, who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord, or who shall stand in his holy place? Is a he that had what a clean hand and a pure heart who has not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully, he shall receive the blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. These are the generation of them that seek him, that seek thy face, O Jacob. The Bible said, Who can ascend? Who can assess where God is? How can you get there? How can you say, I want to go in, into the spirit? Sometime in church, we tell people, Be in the spirit, and they have no idea. Be in the spirit simply means switch from the physical and the natural realm and enter into the spirit so that you can be with God. God, even though your body is in the church, even though your body is at home, your body is in the place where you are doing the prayer, but now you are with God, you have switched. Now the Bible says, Who can ascend? How can you see God whenever you like to see Him? How can you switch from the natural into the supernatural? There must be clean hands, there must be pureness of the heart. The heart that is pure cannot harbor offense. You are angry with your brother, your sister, and you are coming to church to do loud prayer. You are bluffing. You are wasting your time. You cannot see God like that. One must have a clean hand and a pure heart. You must not lift up your soul unto idol. You must not sacrifice to idol. And the Bible says such a person will not only see God, but he shall receive a blessing from God and then he will inherit the righteous nature of God. All say purity. Number two criteria to gain God's attention, turn 
word of God is in charity. Charity is an expression of love. Charity is love itself, but it is the expression of love. One cannot love without expression. I can't keep saying, I love you, I love you, and there is nothing to show. If I love you, child of God, I must have something to prove it. In the book of First John chapter 3, verse 18, he said, my little children, let us not love in war, neither in talk, but in deeds and in truths. I can't keep expressing expressing love to God and to the brethren without expressing it by action. I can't keep saying it without doing it. That's what he's saying here. You cannot confine love by words only, but by action, by doing. I want to show you something from the Bible. This may touch you. The book of Isaiah 58. Let's start from verse 1. The Bible said, cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet and show thy people their transgression and the house of Jacob their sin. Verse 2. He said, yet they seek me daily and delight to know my ways as a nation that did righteousness and forsook not the ordinances of their God. They ask of me ordinances of justice and they take delight in approaching to God. The spirit he said, Wherefore have we fasted? Say they, and thou seest not. Wherefore have we afflicted our soul and thou takest no knowledge? Behold, in the day of your fast, ye find pleasure and exert your labor. Behold, ye fast for strife, for debate. They fasted for wickedness. God has said, ye shall not fast as ye do this day to make your voice to be heard on high. Now God was not telling them, said, this is the kind of fast that I have chosen. To lose the bound of wickedness and to undo the heavy burden and to let the oppressed go free and that ye break every yoke this is the charity I'm talking about. Is it not to thee thy bread to the hungry, and that thou bring the poor that are cast out to the house when thou seest the naked, that thou covered him, and that thou hide not thyself from thy own flesh? God was saying, This is the kind of fast that command my attention. This is the kind of fast that you will do so that I can come in and be involved in the matter. Let's look at verse 8. Then shall thy light be break forth as the morning and thy head shall spring forth speedily and the righteousness shall go before thee the glory of the Lord shall be the reward. Now take note of this verse 9. Then shall thou call and the Lord shall what? Answer. So when you have done charity, as Press love, love of God, and love to humanity. When you call, he said, Then I will answer. So, when you are fasting, it's not just all about killing the body, it's not just all about competition, it's not just all about a witch you want to kill. God will not put his hand there. God will not, as a matter of fact, God may count it to you as sin. God said, The kind of fasting I want is that you show love. No wonder the time of fasting, I find myself more weak in terms of human reserve. I can't reserve anything during the time when I'm fasting. If you catch me fasting, if you ask me of the, the money for food that I'm about to use to eat, the only remaining one, I may give it to you and go and be lamenting inside. I don't know why. It is something that's been happening to me. So God is saying when you are fasting, it's a land to give to the poor. Then when you call, I love this verse 9, and the Lord shall answer thou shalt cry and he shall say here I am and if that take away from the midst of thee the yoke and put it forth of the finger and speak in vanity if thou draw it out the Lord said he will as answer you when you do this right thing and the right thing have to do with love if God find love God comes your love for God will be expressed 
in your love for humanity. So the third thing that commands God's attention is faith. Oh God. Faith! Child of God is the ability to believe where there is no sign. Or say the ability to believe where there is no sign. That's the definition of faith. They don't have to tell you about the end result of the journey God is calling you into. They don't have to tell you about the end result of what God is going to do after you do this and do that. They just called you like God called Abraham. Abraham is referred to as the father of faith. Why? Because of Genesis chapter 12. He heard from